Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on Excel's powerful stock history function. If you've ever needed to analyze stock market data directly in Excel, this function is a game changer. Today, we'll explore what the stock history function does, how it works, and walk through a practical example to help you understand its real-world applications. By the end of this video, you'll be able to use stock history confidently in your own spreadsheets. Let's get started. The stock history function is a relatively new addition in Excel 365, designed to pull historical stock market data directly into your spreadsheets. It allows you to retrieve information such as opening prices, closing prices, high and low prices, and trading volumes for specific stocks over a defined period. This function is incredibly useful for investors, financial analysts, or anyone who needs to track and analyze stock performance without leaving Excel. It eliminates the need for manual data entry or importing data from external sources, saving you time and ensuring accuracy. Let's break down the syntax of the stock history function. It has several arguments, but only the first two are required, stock, the ticker symbol of the stock you want to analyze such as APL for Apple, start date, the start date for the historical data, end date, the end date for the historical data. If omitted, Excel defaults to the current date. Interval, the frequency of the data, such as daily, weekly, or monthly. Headers, whether to include headers in the output. Properties, specific data points to retrieve, such as closing price or volume. The syntax looks like this, equals stock history stock, start date, end date, interval, headers, properties. Now, let's see how this works in practice with a brand new example. Imagine you're an investor analyzing the performance of three tech stocks Apple, Microsoft, and Google over the past year. You want to retrieve their daily closing prices and calculate their average monthly performance. Here's how you can do it using the stock history function. Let's start with the most basic use case, retrieving daily closing prices for a single stock. Suppose you want to analyze the daily closing prices of Apple over the past year. This is useful for tracking price trends, identifying patterns, or calculating returns. Use the following formula, equals stock history APL, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 1, 1. Let's break this down. APL is the ticker symbol for Apple. The 1st of January 2024 and December 31st, 2024 define the start and end dates for the data. 0 specifies a daily interval. 1 includes headers in the output. 1 retrieves the closing price. Here's what the output looks like. With this data, you can create line charts to visualize price trends, calculate daily returns, or identify significant price movements. For example, you might notice a sharp increase in Apple's stock price in June, which could correlate with a product launch or earnings report. Next, let's retrieve the weekly high and low prices for Microsoft. This is useful for understanding the volatility of a stock over time. High and low prices can help you identify resistance and support levels, which are key concepts in technical analysis. To retrieve the date, high and low prices, use the following formula, equals stock history MSFT, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 1, 1, 0, 3, 4. Let's break this down. MSFT is the ticker symbol for Microsoft. The 1st of January 2024 and December 31st, 2024 define the start and end dates for the data. One specifies a weekly interval. One includes headers in the output. 0, 3, 4 specifies that we want to retrieve the date, high price, and low price. Here's what the output looks like. With this data, you can calculate the weekly price range high, low to measure volatility. For instance, if you notice that Microsoft's price range widened significantly in October, it could indicate increased market activity or news events affecting the stock. To calculate the weekly price range, use the following formula in a new column, equals B to C2. Here's how the updated table looks. This table now includes the weekly price range, which is a useful metric for analyzing stock volatility. 
You can use this data to identify periods of high or low volatility and make informed trading decisions. Now, let's calculate the average monthly closing prices for Google. This is useful for smoothing out daily fluctuations and identifying long-term trends. First, retrieve the date and daily closing prices using the stock history function. Use the following formula, equals stock history Google, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's break this down. Google is the ticker symbol for Google. The 1st of January 2024 and December 31st, 2024 define the start and end dates for the data. 0 specifies a daily interval. 1 includes headers in the output. 0, 1 specifies that we want to retrieve the date and closing price. Here's what the output looks like. Next, we'll calculate the average monthly closing prices. To do this, we'll use the Averages function. Here's the formula for January equals average a speed to b to 53 a to a to 53 greater than equals the 1st of January 2024 a to a to 53 less than equals January 31st 2024 let's break this down b to b to 53 is the range containing the daily closing prices a to a to 53 is the range containing the dates greater than equals the 1st of January 2024 and less than equals January 31st, 2024 define the date range for January. Repeat this formula for each month, adjusting the date range accordingly. Here's the output. This table shows a steady upward trend in Google's stock price throughout the year. You can use this data to identify seasonal patterns or compare Google's performance to other stocks in your portfolio. Trading volume is a key indicator of market activity. Let's analyze the daily trading volume for Tesla. High trading volumes often indicate strong investor interest, which can lead to significant price movements. Use this formula, equals stock history TSLA, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 1, 0, 5. Here's the output. With this data, you can identify days with unusually high trading volumes. For example, if Tesla's volume spiked in March, it could coincide with an earnings announcement or a major news event. High volume days often provide valuable insights into market sentiment. Let's compare the yearly performance of Apple, Microsoft, and Google. This is useful for evaluating which stocks performed best over the year. To do this, we'll retrieve the start and end prices for each stock using the stock history function, then calculate the percentage change for the year. Here's how you can do it step by step. First, retrieve the start price price on the first trading day of the year and the end price price on the last trading day of the year for each stock, for Apple. Start price equals stock history APL, the 1st of January 2024, the 1st of January 2024, 0. 0, 2. And price equals stock history APL, December 31st, 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 0, 2, for Microsoft. Start price equals stock history MSFT, the 1st of January, 2024, the 1st of January, 2024, 0, 0, 2. And price equals stock history MSFT, December 31st, 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 0, 2, for Google. Start price, equals stock history Google, the 1st of January, 2024, the 1st of January, 2024, 0, 0, 2. And price, equals stock history Google, December 31st, 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 0, 2. Let's break this down. The start date and end date are set to the same day to retrieve the price for that specific day. Zero specifies a daily interval. Zero excludes headers in the output. Two retrieves the closing price. Here's what the output looks like. Next, calculate the percentage change for each stock using the following formula. Equals end price, start price, start price. Here's the output. This table shows that Google had the highest annual return at 38%, followed by Apple at 36.9% and Microsoft at 15.5%. You can use this data to evaluate your portfolio's performance and make informed decisions about rebalancing. 
let's retrieve the monthly opening and closing prices for Amazon. This is useful for analyzing price gaps and identifying trends at the start and end of each month. Use this formula, equals stock history AMZN, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 2, 1, 2, 1. Here's the output. This data shows that Amazon stock price consistently increased each month. You can use this information to identify patterns, such as whether Amazon tends to perform better in certain months. Let's identify the best and worst performing months for Netflix. This is useful for understanding seasonal trends or evaluating the impact of specific events. First, retrieve the monthly closing prices using the stock history function. Equals stock history AMZN, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 2, 1, 1. Next, calculate the percentage change for each month using the formula. Equals current month price, previous month price, previous month price. To automate this, you can use the following formula in Excel assuming the closing prices are in column B, equals B3B2B2. This table shows that Netflix had its best performance in November with a 17% increase, while April was the worst month with a 9% decline. You can use this data to identify seasonal trends or evaluate the impact of specific events, such as new content releases. Finally, Let's create a stock dashboard that displays key metrics for multiple stocks. This is useful for monitoring your portfolio at a glance. We'll retrieve data for Apple, Microsoft, and Google, and calculate metrics like average price, maximum price, and minimum price for each stock. Here's how you can do it step by step, with each stock's data in a separate cell range. First, retrieve the daily closing prices for each stock using the stock history function. We'll place each stock's data in a separate cell range to keep things organized, for Apple. Place the formula in cell A1, equals stock history APL, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 1, 0, 2. This will populate the date and closing price for Apple in columns A and B for Microsoft. Place the formula in cell D1, equals stock history MSFT, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 1, 0, 2. This will populate the date and closing price for Microsoft in columns D and D. For Google, place the formula in cell G1, equals stock history Google, the 1st of January 2024, December 31st, 2024, 0, 1, 0, 2. This will populate the date and closing price for Google in columns G and each here's what the output looks like for each stock. Next, calculate the average price, maximum price, and minimum price for each stock using Excel functions. We'll place these metrics in a summary table for easy comparison, such as, for Apple. Average price, place the formula in cell K2, equals average B to B to 5.3. Maximum price, place the formula in cell L2, MAX B to B to 5.3. Minimum price, place the formula in cell M2, equals min B to B to 5.3. Here's what the output looks like. Then you can use Excel's charting tools to create visualizations, such as bar charts or line graphs. This dashboard provides a quick overview of each stock's performance. You can expand it to include additional metrics, such as annual returns or trading volumes, depending on your needs. This formula can be applied to the start and end prices retrieved using stock history. You might be wondering, why not just use external tools or websites for stock data? The beauty of stock history lies in its integration with Excel. It allows you to automate data retrieval, perform calculations, and create dynamic reports all within a single platform. Plus, it's a huge time saver for anyone who regularly analyzes stock market data. And that's a wrap. In this video, we explored the stock history function in Excel from its basic syntax to practical applications like retrieving historical stock data, calculating monthly averages, and comparing stock performance. Whether you're an investor, analyst, or just someone interested in the stock market, stock history can simplify your workflow and make your spreadsheets more dynamic. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Excel tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.